Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have something pretty relaxed for you guys. So I recently just finished this new asset. After a lot of work on iguana, I really just want to do something a little bit more artistic. Uh, maybe something I didn't have to do too much modeling on. But I do want to use this opportunity maybe to go through how I generally using the mask generator inside a substance painter to help with my texturing. I didn't record the modeling process of this asset. I'm just going to quickly explain where I got everything. Uh, the ornament the pattern on top of his head is an ornament pack from JR Tools. Um, I will put the link down below. I use a lot of ornaments in my things, so it's just faster to have a pack like that so I don't have to model them every time. For the skull itself, I took the ZBrush Anatomy tool and I Z remeshed the skull inside because it was uh, triangulated. And I just sculpted it on top of that. Um, this thing is more for design. Uh, it's more just for uh, sculpting practice. So I don't need any specific typology. The floating necklace is something I grabbed from my previous asset. So the modeling part of this asset was put together really fast. Uh, most of the time was spent on sculpting and also texturing. Let's get into the mask generators. So this is uh, what it looks like after I baked a high resolution to my low geometry. And I want to quickly show you all the maps I baked, uh, the normal map, the AO, and also the curvature. I always like to look at them for a little bit, just make sure everything is baked correctly and I can get the right kind of information uh, when I use them to create masks. So far, everything looks pretty good. I think we can just start using this one. Um, to demonstrate a mask generator, I'm going to create two very simple layers, two fill layers actually. For those two fill layers, I'm only going to be needing the color map, so I'm going to turn off everything else to speed up the process. The program is reacting a little bit slow, so I'm going to change my viewport resolution to 2K actually. I found that in general, working in 2K is better. Uh, everything reacts a little bit faster. And to be honest, as long as I have enough UDIM, I don't find a huge difference in terms of resolution. As you can see, I have about 10 UDIMs for this asset. Now I'm going to create the second fill layer here. Same as the first one, I'm going to turn off everything except for color. And after that, I'm going to change the base fill layer to a black color and the top fill layer to a white color. The reason why we do that is because I'm just building a mask here. So visually, uh, that will be easier to see. I'm also just going to go to the base color view. Uh, so we don't have any kind of unnecessary specs. Uh, we're just going to look at the mask as it is. Next, we will add a black mask on the white layer. I right click and just select add black mask and select a mask and add generator and inside properties we're going to choose the mask generator the viewport will update and this is the default state whenever you start to use a mask generator uh, there's a lot of things going on so i'm gonna explain to you how i normally use it before we start to make any changes on the mask, we need to look at our reference a little bit because that's going to determine what we do. So this is the main uh, inspiration I used for the whole concept. And I also collected quite a few kind of metal material and also uh, bone material just to look at uh, what kind of detail I want to put on this guy. So from this one, we can see that in general in the curvature area is one material, but in the cavity area, it's a different type of material. So that's kind of the look uh, I'm trying to capture. Uh, which means that I will have a nice, I will have to make a nice curvature map uh, just to capture that material. And also I need to make a nice cavity map to capture that kind of material. And I find that in a lot of asset, this logic exists. Uh, you're always, always going to find that in more like the surface area versus the cavity area, there's always a little bit of a difference. Either it's weathering or uh, the material started to change uh, because of the real world scenarios. Um, looking at this scalp, we can kind of see that as well. It just gets a little smoother on the edges and the color started to change a little bit. But inside the cavities, it always gets a little bit darker, grungier, maybe less speck. Uh, so with the mask generator, that's kind of, um, we want to be able to make a mask that capture those two different areas. Back to our current mask, I forgot to mention that I turned on use tri-planner on this mask. 
When I look at a mask generator, I see it as the three major things, the grunge, the AO, and also the curvature. I found that the three main things will affect the look, so um, I want to control them one by one to make sure I capture the correct areas. So if I just turn off grunge and turn off AO, now I only left with curvature. But inside the curvature, we have two things as well. Uh, one element is the convexity area, which is more like the edge area, and the concave area, which is more like the cavity area. So since all the materials I want to use, uh, those two areas are a bit separate. So I might want to, when I create one, I want, might want to turn off the other one completely. If this one is mostly for the edge area, I'm going to turn off the concave range completely. I will only focus on the convexity to see what kind of coverage I can get. And uh, please remember, this is a very raw mask without any sort of breakup. Even though it sort of looks organic because of all the surface detail, at this point, we only want to worry about coverage. And after that, if you're happy with this, you can add any kind of breakup that you like. Uh, you can kind of see on the ornaments, the lines are way more clean and consistent, which is probably not what we want, but we can always add more breakup on top of this. Now we know what kind of convexity map we can get. Let's try out the other side of things. I'm turning convexity range completely off. I'm just turning on concavity. I will keep cranking up the numbers until I get the kind of uh, coverage that I was looking for. As you can see, the result is pretty good as well. Again, this is just the starting point. You can add anything you like on top of this. At this level, I'm capturing all the main cavities, but if I just crank up the number even more, I'm starting to capture some of the smaller detail as well. Uh, sometimes I've used a few different mask generators just to capture them separately. This starting point is not too bad, but we, when we use it, we definitely want to break it up a little bit more. So what you can do is to add a few layer inside of the mask stack. And uh, you can try to use some of the substance uh, grunge masks to try to break up this curvature map. Of course, you can always import your own black and white maps to break up your masks if you think that it's better. Uh, but one thing I really liked about the grunge masks that's already inside a Substance Painter is that they actually give you some adjustments available. So first thing I want to do is change the tri planner because all the seams I have on the head. The two things I find extremely useful is the balance and contrast. So using balance, I can change the entire value of my grunge map. I can make it way darker or maybe way brighter. So if I apply this using a multiply on top of my existing masks, I can basically decide how much I want to cancel out. And also using contrast, um, I can decide the kind of cancellation, how sharp I want everything to be. Now, if I decided that it's uh, destroying way too much of my base mask, I can just change balance and bring things back, but still with a breakup. I hope this quick explanation helped you understand how to use a mask generator a little bit better. Um, I didn't talk about AO and grunge too much. Grunge is basically a mask breakup inside of the generator itself, and sometimes I don't use it very much. I rather just create my own fill layer to break up everything. And if you turn on AO, you will be able to capture more of the ambient occlusion area. The last thing I want to do with this video, just quickly go through uh, my texturing, not process, but just everything I've done with this object. Uh, so I separated my main scene to three different things, uh, the skull area, the gold, and the dark metal. So within the skull, let me just turn everything off so I can show you one by one what they do. Um, so I have a basic bone texture. This is where I started. Oh, actually I have, um, I have a DOF on, so I'm just turn it off. And a veneer. So... So this is the basic bone texture I started with. And within this texture, we have a color, height, and roughness. So the next thing, uh, it's mostly a bunch of color breakup on top of this. So first is a bright color breakup, mostly for the teeth area and for the top of the head. 
and then uh, I still find the teeth a little too yellow. So I actually changed the teeth color to be something a little bit wider. Uh, in general, I feel like the teeth and the main bone has a kind of like a different tone to it. And the next one is the light yellow tone. Just putting a little bit more saturated yellow into certain areas. And also I do see some more like orange tone. Uh, so that's that. And the next one. Um, actually, I didn't really do any color breakup, so there's nothing in it. And the next thing is the, um, the darker area, which is mostly using the cavity map to achieve that, like I've shown before. And, uh, and then it's more uh, the convexity area, the edges. So I have a three different ones to try to capture all the edges that I needed. The one and the second one is a little bit brighter uh, because I realized when I was able to capture these edges, uh, my mask doesn't really do this area. So I actually had to make a separate one and just crank up the convexity a lot more and just reveal this area. And the last one, it's just add a little bit more. I think this last one is mostly for the inside of the eyes because um, the other two masks wouldn't capture it. So I had to do an, a different one that in which I crank up the convexity even more. Just use it for the inside of the eyes. And for the metals, they are quite simple actually. Just the gold is very simple. I have a base metal. So just the base gold material and I have some tone breakup. So I added some warmer tone to it. And I think another surface breakup, which is a bit more, less orange, probably more greener. And then the same, I use the cavity area for one specific type of material and the edges using another specific type of material. You can see the logic between all these different materials uh, very, very similar. So same with this one. Just the basic steel material, uh, darker metal that's not as shiny as the gold. And this one to capture the edges and this one to capture uh, maybe some grunge and weathering inside of it that is uh, pretty matte in general. So that's everything I did with this guy. That is the end of the video. I hope you find it useful. It's entirely about mask generator, but I just use it so much. I feel like maybe it's useful to explain exactly how I do it. If you enjoy this type of content, please subscribe to my channel and give it a like. I will see you in the next one.